Hi everyone, my name is Anita Van Dyke. I am a rocket scientist and also a mother and also a doctor. Um, I just wanna say hi to everyone for joining. My name's Anita for those who are just joining now. Um, I'm in lockdown at the moment in the heart of Bondi, Sydney, Australia. So for all those who are also in lockdown, maybe give me a wave because I feel you, I feel you. Um, for those of who you don't know me, I am a zero waste blogger and author of two books. Firstly, my latest one is called A Zero Waste Family in 30 Days. And also my first book, which is a bestseller and translated to seven languages, it's called A Zero Waste Life, and this is a great beginner's guide. And today, I am going to host a beginner's guide to zero waste living for Plastic Free July, and I can't wait for you to join me. If you have any questions or whatnot, feel free to leave them down below and comment, and I'll answer them as best as I can, and I'll do this at the end. But the aim of this today is really to introduce you to how to get started on this plastic free journey. And at the beginning of Plastic Free July, which is a, a month long event to reduce your waste, reduce your plastic consumption, I wanna share some tips and tricks that has really helped me along my journey. I've been trying to live plastic free or low waste for about six to seven years, and it's never perfect. My motto is sustainability has to be sustainable for you. So really these tips and tricks are inviting you on this journey to begin this journey and make it so that it's sustainable for you in the long run. Okay, so I just wanna start by breaking down what I'm gonna talk about today. So there's lots of areas. Firstly, I'm gonna talk about how we get started on our journey. The second part of it is I'm gonna talk about zero waste cleaning. The third part, I'm also gonna talk about zero waste beauty. And the final part is out and about, out, kind of like zero waste out and about tips and tricks that we can do when we're out shopping or going out um, eating when we can go out when we're not in lockdown. So all these things are broken up so that you can join along and you can do this at home and get started on your Plastic Free July journey. Okay, so let's get started. My first tip for beginning your Plastic Free journey is to do a bin audit. Yes, a bin audit. So that means putting on your reusable gloves the night before your bin is being taken out for council pickup and going through it. Doing a bin audit allows you to know what are the ins and the outs that are going into your home and going out into landfill. So a bin audit may involve looking at all the plastic wrapping that you're taking in. Is it mainly food packaging? Looking at all the rubbish, maybe it be um, fashion or you know clothing tags that you're throwing out. So you're consuming a lot of fast fashion maybe. It could be a lot of takeaway containers because you're, you know, you're eating out a lot because you don't have time to do meal prep or do cook healthy meals. Whatever it may be along your journey, doing a bin audit allows you to understand the ins and the outs of your home so you can make changes starting where you are. As part of this bin audit, I suggest for you to break it into what I call the trash command center, and I have this in my home. The trash command center allows you to sort out your garbage so that you can understand where everything goes, allows you to do the research of what can be recycled in your own home and your local council area, and it also allows you to teach your family members on how to sort out your waste. So, my trash command center consists of one bin, which I call soft plastics. These are the scrunchable plastics, which I put into a soft plastic bag, which we're all trying to reduce, but sometimes it's unavoidable, especially in the beginning of our journey. And those soft plastics can be taken to your local Woolworths or Coles supermarket, and they can be recycled that way. Soft plastics is not the only solution, obviously, and we're trying to reduce that. But when it's unavoidable, you should label it and teach your family what are considered soft plastics, and they're usually the scrunchable plastics. 
Another bin I have is labeled recycling. So this is an opportunity for you to look up your local council of what can be recycled, what can't be recycled. And I actually like to put a little note or draw a diagram for my family to say, these are the things that can go into recycling and put that on top of the bin so it's clearly labeled. I then have my compost bin or my worm farm, whatever suits you. Now, I like to think of the plastic free journey as a spectrum of choices that we all have. So it doesn't have to be, you have to compost, you have to do a worm farm, you have to have chickens. You know, it's not a black and white solution. And I think as we all go along this sustainability journey, it's about finding a solution that suits you. And that's what I encourage you to do, to become your own zero waste engineer and find solutions and life hacks that suit you. So for example, for all your food scraps, you may consider a compost bin is too difficult because you live in a small apartment. What you can do is freeze the compost and take it to your local community garden or look up on a website called sharewaste.com where people accept your compost, where it be neighbors or community gardens or community initiatives, and you can take it down once a week. Easy, no, you know, no strings attached there. You don't even have to do any upkeep. Another option is a Bokashi bin, which is a fermenting bin that allows you to ferment meat products and also other animal products, as well as your normal fruit and veg products. And it ferments it down into a, uh, um, a juice that you can put into your garden. So that's an option as well. And of course we have composting options. There's lots of DIY compost that you can get from your local council <coughs> at a discounted rate. And also at workshops that you can do with your local council to teach yourself how to do compost. And finally also, another thing is we can do worm farms. And that's what I'm starting up again as well. My daughter loves the worm farm. She loves looking at the worms. And it's something that you can you can do in your own home and learn how to grow yourself. But all those options are available to you to help dispose of your waste or reuse your waste, um, recycle your waste and compost your waste in a more um, eco-friendly way. So, so it's really important that we have those different options and you can look up those different options that are suitable for you. So we've got the soft plastics, the recycling, the compost, and now my final bin in my trash command station is what I call landfill. Now I deliberately label this bin landfill for all my family members to see because it's a reminder that there is no such thing as a way. When we throw things away, we are actually sending it to landfill and it causes, you know, it's most of these products takes hundreds of years to break down. And as a result, it causes methane in our atmosphere and contributes to climate change. So it's a kind of vicious cycle as well. And it's a good education point to teach your family that there is no such thing as a way. So those are the four bins that I have in my home as part of my trash command station. And during this initial step of doing a bin audit of understanding what your ins and your outs are, then you can do your own trash command station that suits you. Okay, so that's my first point to get started on your journey. Now I'm gonna share tips and tricks on how to do your own plastic free products in your own home. And the first subject I want to talk about is um, what I call house or home cleaning products. So after you've done your trash audit, I want you to go home and have a look at all the bottles underneath your sink. On average, Australians have about 10 to 20 bottles of home cleaning products of various you know, purposes. So it might be a bathroom product, it might be a toilet product, it might be a wood cleaning product, it might be a, a window product, whatever it may be. On average, we have about 10 to 20 plastic bottles. And I think that we are also coming to marketing because at the end of the day, our grandparents and our parents didn't necessarily have all these products. We can make do with some simple products in the home. And for me, my cleaning products consist of three items, and I'll just show you what they are. Firstly, good old fashioned white vinegar. 
I refill this bottle from my local bulk store. White vinegar is a gem. You can dilute it with 50-50 water and you can also add in your old citrus rinds to make a lovely DIY home cleaner. You can ferment those citrus rinds for about three to four days and it leaves a lovely fragrant smell and you can use it as a general all-purpose cleaner. It's so simple, so effective and very cost efficient as well. The second product I have in my home is Castile Soap. Castile Soap is my miracle product really. It is the jack of all trades. I refill this bottle from my local bulk store and it, you can dilute it to different uh, concentrations. So you can do lots of different things with it. So Castile Soap is a vegetable based soap and it's great because it can be used in many environments and it's very effective for you know, um, cleaning in all sorts of areas. So a general all-purpose cleaner I like to do is dilute it one part Castile soap to 10 parts water. That's a great general all-purpose cleaner. You can also do a stain remover from this where you can soak the object in one part um, um, Castile soap to five parts water. So it's a more concentrated solution. What I also like to do with it is make hand wash and body wash out of it out of different dilutions and you can add some essential oils so it's up to you to do what you like to do so you can make different things out of it if you don't have castile soap in bulk in your in your local area an easy hack is to get a castile soap soap bar grind or grate the castile soap and mix it in a big pot of hot water and you can make your own liquid castile soap there okay Another solution that I like to do, my third product, is bicarbonate soda. Soda. So bicarbonate soda is an easy product that you can get in the bulk store or you can get it in usually cardboard packaging. And what the great thing about this is that you can mix it to make it a stain remover and also you can use it as a sort of an abrasive kind of mechanical cleaning uh, product. So I like to add in, um, make a Castile soap and water, so equal parts, and you, you can use that as a stain remover. I like to add in coconut oil to make it a, um, a label remover off your jars and any sticky products as well. So all those three products, you can make it into different dilutions and you can put it in a spray bottle or reuse your spray bottles you already have to make your own cleaners in the home. And that's a really, really easy solution for you. So those three products will save you time, money and save you plenty of plastic bottles. Now, the second area I want to talk about, and these are some recipes that I have in both my books, A Zero Waste Life and a zero waste family. And the reason why I make such simple recipes is that I myself am a very busy person. I'm a full-time doctor. I'm also an author. I'm a mother. I don't have time to go out and make complicated recipes. So all my recipes are usually five ingredients or less. So it's um, really simple. So zero waste beauty is the next product. Now, I have found that with the simplification of my beauty regime, the better my skin is. And I think that's the same thing for most of us. We try to overcomplicate things and it just seems to be stripping itself of its natural kind of um, natural oils and everything else. So what I like to do is keep it simple. So what my, my favorite product I have made, and this is something that I like to do, and it saves you tons of money, is called my Miracle Cleansing Oil. My Miracle Cleansing Oil consists of, I fill a, a stopper jar like this or any bottle with, I fill it with half organic sunflower oil and then one third jojoba oil. And then I add in 10 to 20 drops of essential oils as an option. So you can add in lavender if you have dry skin, ylang ylang if you have sensitive skin, or tea tree oil if you have oily skin. But that's totally optional to you and depending on your skin type and whether or not you have sensitivities to essential oils. Otherwise, half organic sunflower oil and one third Jojoba oil makes a really great cleansing oil that removes all your makeup, including waterproof eye makeup. And it also allows your skin to be really nourished and soft at the bottom, 
um, at the end. So it's really, really lovely and it saves you tons of money. Let's be honest. Um, cleansing oils, and I've tried them all, luxury brands included, can be very expensive. A product like this costs a few dollars and it lasts months and it works. My skin has never been better by using this simple product. Once again, all these recipes are available in my book or blog and also my Instagram account, rocket underscore science. Come follow me there for more zero waste tips. My second beauty product that I want to talk about is a coffee scrub. So when you are finished with your coffee grounds and you have the leftover, don't throw them away or don't compost them. You can actually use it to make your own body scrub. I like to add in one cup of coffee grounds, so the, the grinds that you have left over. Then I add in another cup of olive oil and I add in about two to three teaspoons or tablespoons, however you much you like of coconut oil, melt it, mix it together to make this delicious coffee scrub. And this is a great thing because Let's be honest, the body scrubs that we have in the supermarkets contain a product called microbeads. And what they are are tiny, tiny balls of plastic. So they're microplastics that end up in our waterways. And the fish eat those microplastics thinking that they're food. And then it bioaccumulates up the food chain and it ends up back in us if you eat fish products, but also ends up in our waterways. So these microplastics are really, really detrimental. And let's be honest, for the sake of beauty, we don't need to have those micro beads. We can make our own body scrub with coffee. If you don't drink coffee, you can use um, brown sugar as well. The finer the sugar, the better. Whatever you have at home, it's such a simple product and it feels and smells delicious and it saves you lots of money. I love it. Now, the final area I want to talk about, and um, I want to share this all with you as well, it's called my out and about kind of tips and tricks. And it is what I call creating a zero waste kit. Now, a zero waste kit will help you reduce about 80% of your waste on a day-to-day -day basis. And a zero waste kit is what I put together in a drawstring bag like this. I put it in a drawstring bag because it allows me to transfer it from handbag to backpack. I can even put it in my car. And it's an easy kind of life hack so you don't forget it. You can even hook this on the back of your door so that you can never forget it before you leave the house. That's a great tip as well. So in my zero waste kit, I have the most common products that are found in beachside cleanups. So plastic products that are found on the beach by people cleaning up the beach, and these are the most common items, right? The first one being plastic bags. There's no need for plastic bags, especially in this day and age when there's such great alternatives. Just bring your own bag. And a great one I like to do is a foldable bag like this so that it is nice and compact and you can have it ready and easy for you to go shopping, right? This one's a great one. I've reused it many, many times. You can also get a, a string one like this that, you know, goes down next to nothing and is a great way to have, in, a great item to have in your zero waste kit, okay? If you forget your bag, try other alternatives such as using your hands or asking for a cardboard box. Okay, anything to avoid plastic really, because plastic takes hundreds and hundreds of years to break down, and it's also made from non-renewable resources, so petroleum. So let's, let's try to avoid that. Another thing I have in my zero waste kit is a reusable keep cup. So this is a great product for if you drink tea or coffee, but also what I like to put in there is um, if I have leftover food. So if I'm at a cafe, I put in my leftover pastry or croissant in there, or I can even put nuts or fruit in there for young children. So there's so many ways to use a reusable keep cup and it's a great thing to have in your zero waste kit. You can get collapsible ones as well, so to make it more compact, but whatever the solution, try to get a reusable cup as much as possible, okay? 
The third product most commonly found in beachside cleanups is plastic bottles. So get yourself a reusable drink bottle. You can just upcycle your old glass jars. You don't even need to buy one if you don't want to. You can just use what you have at home. So that's a really simple alternative. Another final thing that is most commonly found in beachside cleanups is plastic straws. And let's be honest, Plastic straws, we use them for, what, 10 minutes at the most, and it takes hundreds of years to break down. So let's find an alternative. And the simple alternative is what Mother Nature has created, and we all have one. It's called a mouth, right? Most of us don't even need a straw for all the drinks that we have. So really, you could just use your mouth and just say no to the straw. But if you want to keep your lipstick fresh or if you have young kids, a simple alternative is to just use a stainless steel straw. Okay, you can bring one of these, you can have them at different sizes and just put them as part of your zero waste kit. Okay, and other things I like to have in my zero waste kit, um, for those who are curious, is chopsticks. So they're a great alternative for eating um, Asian food. And I have a reusable spork. These are made out of recycled plastic. And this is a spoon, fork and knife in one. So it's a great compact solution. You can get these um, online or at camping stores. They're a great alternative to single use cutlery. Okay. And the, the two other items I have in my zero waste kit is a cloth napkin. So instead of using paper napkins or even tissues, you can have your own cloth napkin, which you can even use to wipe mouths and hands, but also to wrap in, you know, nuts or pieces of fruit or even pastries in so that there's no need for single use paper bags or plastic bags as well. And finally, in this day and age, I think it's really important to have your own reusable face mask. Okay, so let's save the face masks for people who really need them, the disposable ones. So that's our healthcare workers. They're made of non-renewable products, the disposable ones. For those of us who can use reusable ones, just wash and reuse and saves a lot of plastic as well. So like I said, all these items fit perfectly into a drawstring bag like this. And that's my zero waste kit that I can transfer from one place to another easily. And you can create one for your whole family. Okay, I think that brings us to an end to some really simple tips and tricks that you can do at the start of Plastic Free July. It's a great initiative to try to reduce your waste. But as I say time and time again, plastic free living is not about truly, you know, eliminating plastic from your life as you know, because that's kind of impossible at this day and age, but it's about reducing your waste as much as you can and doing what you can. Remember, sustainability has to be sustainable for you. And I have more tips and tricks in my book. A zero waste family which is my latest one which is for families for 2 to 25 really and um, my zero waste life book which is my first book which is a beginner's guide as well for zero waste living all those are available online at most good bookstores and I hope you get a copy if you can um, and also join me at rocket underscore science on Instagram. Um, join me with all my other followers where I share daily tips and tricks on how to live a truly zero waste life, which is about not wasting any of your resources, including plastic, time and money. Okay, thanks for joining me.